tuned back into the Mayweather Live show. I'm over here with Pastor Michael. Pastor Michael. And he is keeping it all the way. We keeping it all the way live. But the next thing I want to talk about, a lot of people say the Bible was written by man. Right. And there's a lot of things in this Bible that, there's a lot of things that were not put into this Bible. Right. So what do you have to say about that? <laughs> well, I'll say that more. You are correct. Bible was written by man. Man read it, they invented the printing press, and yes, man read it, God gave it, inspired to man. God created man, and God used, he partnered with man to get his message to the world. Look, I'm not going to argue about you if those scriptures are real or not. The Bible says the scriptures were given by inspiration of God, men moved on by the Holy Ghost, okay? Go to the History Channel, Google Jesus, Google Paul. I mean, the history declares we don't even have to have that argument anymore. If you don't believe the Bible is real, you don't believe your mom's real or your family tree is real because now what you're saying is history doesn't mean anything. But what I can tell you is there are things in the Bible that can only be proven by its reality in our life. Such as? Such as speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. So explain to people what speak because this is the understanding I had of speaking in tongues okay. when I was younger. I was, uh, I was probably about eight years old right. and my, my parents, they took me to be baptized. <clears throat> And I saw all these kids were touched and they started speaking, but I didn't do it. Right. So I figured they was just faking it and it was something that they do. And then I go to church and I see people doing this and I'm like, what are they doing? Right. And I knew it had something to do with the Lord, but I wasn't sure. quite sure mm -hmm. what it was. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. I've spoken in tongues. Right. But I want you to explain what is spoke, what is speaking in tongues? What is that? What is that? All right. You know, number one, speaking in tongues is a glossolalian phenomenon. The Bible says in Isaiah, with stammering lips and in other tongues, will I speak unto this people? Okay, you got to understand this language came from uh, language, the separation of language came back in Genesis chapter 11 when God uh, saw men coming together with one voice, one vision, one language. They said, we're going to build an altar to God. They built something, Tower of Babel, all the way up to heaven. God had to come down and break it up and he realized that the power was in their one language. So he separated their language and all of a sudden there was confusion because everybody wasn't speaking the same thing. Okay, so what God did was when Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead, he sent the power of the Holy Ghost. He wanted to give everybody one language to communicate with him. So the Holy Spirit gives us a supernatural language where every individual can have communication with God that will bypass our natural mind. So you brought something else in, the Holy Ghost. Yes. So the Holy Ghost, explain it. Exactly the Holy the Spirit Holy is the third spark of the Trinity. It is the Spirit of God of creation that moved upon the waters. When Jesus died, he said, that I, will leave, I will not leave you comfortless. It is the Spirit of Jesus that lives on the inside of us, that whispers the voice of God, that reveals all truth, and he's the one who inspires that supernatural language. Simply like this, God gave us speaking with other tongues so that you and I could have direct communication, spirit to spirit with God, and it'll buy past your natural mind. Remember the story of knowledge of good and evil? Right. Well, that tainted us. So we can't tap into spiritual things just uh, on the natural. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to help us get revelation. So when you speak in tongues, what does that do for you, though? I mean, what, what are you saying? Why is it happening? Mm -hmm. When does it happen? Okay. It, number one, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I will speak with other tongues. And then in June verse 20, it says, uh, when I speak in other tongues, I build up my most holy faith. So God gave us the gift so that you, it's like you working out. You look like you're pretty big. Mayweather, Floyd, I don't know what's going on, but you work out. So when you speak in tongues, you're working out your spirit, man, and building up your faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So when I pray in the spirit, my personal prayer language, there are two types. There's one for the believer. There's one for the congregation. If I stand up and do it in the congregation, it should be an interpreter. But if I do it on my own in my own prayer closet, it is between me and God. I'm tapping into God's wisdom. And you have no idea what you're saying. No, no, no. Not in the natural. The natural mind cannot understand so spiritual your mind things. Is, you're just going. Exactly. But, it, it, but that's going straight to the Lord. And that's the, it's okay. It's your spirit man is doing this one. Two, that way when God calls you to do something and you need faith, you can draw upon it. When God calls you to push somebody, when you're working out, you can draw upon the energy and the strength of your muscles. So without faith, it is impossible to please God, but with faith, it is. And we get that by praying in the Holy Ghost. And it is one of the things that the devil wants to keep away from all of us because he doesn't want us to be strong Christians. How you doing? Uh, okay, so you said speaking in the congregation as well. So when a person stands up, like at the church, mm -hmm. we attended, 
um, a person has spoke out and then somebody else interpreted. What 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 is all of that? That about? equals prophecy. It's all in First Corinthians fourteen. See, God, prophecy is greater than tongues, and sometimes God will use a supernatural language from another country, and He'll have somebody on the airplane listen to that language. He's from India, and you're speaking an Indian dialect, but you didn't know it. And the Bible says in Acts chapter three, we know chapter two, we do hear them speaking the wonderful works of God in the mystery when the Holy Spirit was poured out. All of those countries they name. They heard those unlearned Galilean dumb men speaking natural languages that they didn't learn. And see, that, that's what I'm getting at, the prophecy. So I've had people pray over me, mm -hmm. speaking in tongues, right. and say, the Lord is tying your shoes, the Lord is opening the doors, the Lord has this for you, the Lord right. is proud of you. So they're actually interpreting, communicating, and yes. then bringing that back. Yeah, communicating with God. It's like the internet. You download something, you get the file, you open it up. Speaking in tongues is that blue cord that you make sure you pay your bill, you make sure you're saved. That blue cord that connects you to heaven, that when you speak in tongues, you can download the will of God in a mystery. You click open, boom, the program unlocks, and all of a sudden you find the will of God for your life. You better get it. And, and, and you just brought us to another thing, the will. My mm -hmm. mom, when I, I went to go play pro football, yeah. and I, when I had wrote my book, I was like, oh, this is this is what I'm supposed to be doing in my life. My okay. mom Mom was telling me the whole, I don't think this is the Lord's will for you. Right. I'm like, no, this is the Lord's will for me. Right. And then come to find out it was not the Lord's will for me. Right. What what does the Lord's will for you actually mean? The Lord's will for you is God created us to do something, okay? And everybody has a passion. If you want to know God's will, find your desire. You know, look, even it could be the wrong desire when you find it and you say, God, I think this is what you want me to do. You went to play pro football. See, God is so strong and he loves you so much. You could step out one way and think you're doing God's will. But if you go in faith, he'll say, no, nah, let me come on, baby. Your foot, it needs to go over here. That's where you need to be. So without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you got to find the desire of God. What do you mean? If money was not an option, what would I do for God? Ask yourself that. Some people say, well, if money was not an option, I'd feed the hungry. Well, guess what? That's what you need to do for God. You just need God to help you do it. Hmm. So finding the will of God, prayer, getting in the word, finding your desire, because everybody's created to do something. And when you tap into that and do it, and it gives God pleasure and it gives you pleasure, and nobody getting wrong and everybody getting right, man, God might be in that. I hope y'all learned something. I hope you're enjoying the show. We're about to go to commercial break. When we come back, we're going to have some closing topics, touch on a couple more controversial things okay, real quick. Okay. Hey, but it's the Mayweather Live Show. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Like that strawberry blonde. Strawberries. Whipped cream. <laughs> hey, focus, focus. Ice cream. So I give it that. Very love. Very love. Like watermelon. Just sweet to touch. Sweet to touch. Like strawberry by Cold Stone Creamery. I got my Oreo overload. Fulfill your fantasy today. Visit Cold Stone Creamery, your ultimate ice cream indulgence. Every day is my birthday when I have my birthday. What do you mean? 